much we're able to absorb at any given time. You're here now. Busyness, noise, so many responsibilities, they're all there. Sunday evening, Monday morning, they'll all still be there. <coughs> and yet you're given this weekend uh, to just catch your breath, to remind yourself that you're precious to the Lord who created you and who called you. Now, this, excuse me, young, young boy, chapel is that way. And don't wander around, please. Thank you. We've got engaged couples in the house. <laughs> the fry is in the house. And we have this children's Spanish choir in the chapel. And we just need to keep the groups. No, I don't. Uh, anyway. It's a privileged time for you. Privilege to come together to renew friendships, to to deepen friendships, to encounter one another as brothers, you know, in the same household. Francis left us a wonderful, wonderful legacy. He said, the privileged place for our encounter with God is in the brotherhood. And we just stop and think about how awesome um, that challenge is. You know, Francis loved to soar the mountains, and he spent many, many um, periods of time on mountain tops in solitude and prayer, renewing himself, strengthening himself for valley work. Francis believed in the real presence. And certainly uh, spend times in, in prayer and in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. Francis loved God's Word and praised <coughs> God's Word, praised the Word of God. And yet with all those experiences, he highlights something very special for us. This is the privileged place for our encounter with God is in the brotherhood. So if you miss those occasions that you can encounter one another, you're missing a little grace you know, to encounter God also. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for safely bringing us to this mountain where we can spend some time in your presence we can celebrate fraternity with brothers. Lord, we ask that you bless and secure our loved ones back home. Keep them safe in your love. For brothers, for the special challenges that you're facing at this time, we ask that you trust them to the one who is able. Just give them over to Jesus especially during this special time of retreat. The theme of your retreat this weekend is dare to get out of the boat. We have our comfort zones, all of us do. And yet Jesus is asking that we be, you know, brave-hearted men, grand-hearted men. And he's asking us to trust enough to step beyond our comforts, our comfort zones, uh, dare to step out of the boat. And so we begin with this prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, your risen Son. We ask that you help us to totally be honest and transparent before you in regards to our relationships, and our commitment to you through this brotherhood. Help us to be stirred out of any comfort zone that we might that we might have settled into. We want to be more like Francis, who modeled his life upon that of Jesus. He was willing to embrace everything 
that came with his yes. Please take out of our lives what should not be there. Put into our lives what should be there. Stir in us generous hearts a fire with your love, <coughs> Lord Jesus. We ask this in your worthy and mighty name, the exalted name, Jesus. Amen. I'd like to open uh, the retreat with this passage from the, the Gospel of Matthew. comes to us from Matthew 14, beginning with verse 22 to 33. Then he made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side, while he himself dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone in solitude with his father. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward his disciples walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried out. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, brothers. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter spoke up and said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come, to walk to you on the water. And Jesus said, Peter, come. Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But then when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus extended his hand to him and brought him safely out of the water. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt me? After they got into the boat, the wind died down, and those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. It's an amazing story, huh? Jesus walking on the waters. It occurs in three of the Gospels, but it's, it's only in the Gospel of Matthew that we have this, this added part about Peter asking Jesus, bid me to come to you on the water. From Peter's subsequent sinking experience. Most of the sermons that I've heard on this passage from Matthew 14, 22 to 33, often focused on Peter's failure to trust, his failure in faith. He had a sinking experience. Yet he also had a wonderful encounter with majesty and the power of God. For well, even though it was only for maybe a few seconds, maybe only for a few steps, Peter walked on water. I'd like us to look at that text. If we're quick to dismiss Peter, oh, he's such a jerk, he's foolhardy again. What a mess Peter is. Um, truly the Gospels reveal his humanness. And yet, I would like us to look at the promise there. Jesus bid Peter come. 
It was a command, it's more than an invitation. It was a command. Come. And Peter then steps over the side of the boat and he begins to move toward Jesus. The brother Jesus has asked each of us to come. That moment made all the difference for us. And as uh, Don Kamishold, Secretary General to the United Nations back in the 60s, he said, I don't remember who or what called me, I don't even remember answering, but at some moment I did say yes, and from that moment everything in my life was new. You and I could make the same statement. Perhaps we don't know exactly when the Lord planted this calling, this wonderful gift in our hearts. Perhaps we wrestled with it. And yet at some point we surrendered and said, okay, Lord, you know, I, I give my life into your keeping. We don't know where that would lead. But we, we said yes. And that yes was a public one. Tomorrow we'll witness it again. And more than witness it, as you see one of your brothers professing, making a commitment, it's a time of renewal and grace for each of us. So rather than sit back and you know and just watch your brother live the moment again because you were there. And the power that it had in your life then has the power again. We need to keep daring to step out of our own comfort zone, uh, wherever that place is, that keeps us from trusting, that keeps us from saying, yes, Lord. I've given my life into your hands, and you will lead you, you will guide. Just help me to, to get out of the way. Help me to get out of the way. We talk about wanting to be Franciscan. We believe it will help us to live holy lives, to become holy, to become saints. Being Franciscan gives us the support of brothers. We want to do great things for God. We want to love Him. Love the one who loved us first. And yet at the same time, we don't want to compromise the comfort and the safety of the boat. And yet it can't happen. We can't say, Lord, I want to be holy. Lord, I want to be a saint. Lord, I want to do great things for you. Lord, I want to love you and trust you and stay in the boat at the same time. It just doesn't happen. Either we stay in the boat and the fire goes out and we've all met women and men in consecrated life whose fire has gone out. And how tragic. Tragic. At one time they were uh, filled with such zeal, such passion, you know, such love and devotion. And <coughs> whatever happened to them, it can happen to each of us also. We can fall asleep at the wheel. We can stop loving, we can stop forgiving, we can stop trusting. We can stop living and just go through the motions. To stay alive, to stay fresh, to stay, to stay filled with zeal, we need to dare the one who called us. We need to dare Jesus. Bid me come, Lord. And he will bid you to come. Come ever closer and closer and closer 
शुभ है passion you know for Jesus and, and for the gospel and, and for Franciscan life and sometimes the image of the crabs in a basket is a more realistic symbol for the Franciscan family than the San Damiano cross if you've been to New England you know, the crabs in the basket. When one is struggling and doing his best to to climb above the others, climb maybe even out of the basket. And he can only get so far and then a claw comes up and drags him right back down. In fraternity, brothers, we can do the same thing. Jesus is bidding us to come closer to him and in fraternity, we promise to help each other do that, and yet we lose our focus. And just like Peter, he lost his focus. And instead of helping one another attain the, the glory of God, attain the, the fullness of that vocation that we've been called to, we, we pull each other down. I don't want to scare those of you who are still in civics who are looking at this fraternity of very human men. I don't want to frighten you. Uh, we are human men. And yet there's always the challenge. In our humanness, Christ is calling us to be great, to be holy, to be Franciscan. That's what we, that's what we pledge. When our minister asks, what do you want? He says, I want to live your life. I want to live with brothers. Have the support of brothers because I know my brokenness, my sinfulness. I know my weakness. I know how easily distracted I am. And the Lord knows that too. That's why he gave me brothers. We need to remember that I pledge to support you. Just as in another covenant, I promise I will love you, honor you, cherish you. As men, can we be that vulnerable? As men, can we be that trusting? As men, as brothers, can we be that free to say, you can trust me to love you, to cherish you, but you're not potatoes in the sack. You know, each and every one of us is, is unique and precious. And we need to look at one another with that kind of reverence and awe. But to do so, we have to get out of the boat. Because it's so easy for me to get paralyzed by my agenda, paralyzed by my ideas of how we should live our life. And I don't want to give you the freedom to live your life. We need to get out of those comfort zones. We can call them prejudices too. We can call them our self-righteousness. The earliest disciples, we can imagine the ridicule that Peter had to endure for months, maybe years after this event that Matthew had performed. <coughs> And yet Peter can still say, yeah, but guys, I walked on water, even only for a few steps. <clears throat> Jesus bid me to come. I sank because I was distracted, not because he couldn't keep me up. But I'm sure the, the other disciples 
you know, made it difficult for people. You know, what a blowhard you are, what a jerk you are. I'm sure they had all kinds of other categories that they were you know, placing upon him. And we do the same thing. You know, we do the same thing. Somebody can come rushing in, I'm so excited about you know, the way the Lord used me. I uh, had this wonderful, wonderful God experience. Ah. Fraternity can be messy. And yet, because the Lord has called us to it, there's no other place where we'll be privileged to grow. Grow into the place of our person and grow into the person of Jesus. And Francis's words are to be trusted. The privileged place for our encounter with God is in the brotherhood. And if we came to the brothers for any other reason other than the brotherhood, we would do the fraternity a big favor and ourselves a big favor if we went home. There's no reason to be a, a friar of San Damiano. There's no reason to be one other than the wholehearted surrender to your brothers. That's what we promise one another. Does it mean we can't have a good fight? Absolutely not. I've been in community 40 years. I've had lots of wonderful battles with my brothers. <laughs> and yet at the end of every one of them, there was the embraccio, you know, the, the peace. 